What's going on there, folks? Good afternoon. Well, good morning to some, good afternoon to others, uh, and, and possibly good evening as well. It is February 24th, 2021, 11 a.m. straight up uh, West Coast time here in California. Going to pop in with a quick update video. Uh, we got some potentially uh, very strong winds here in California today, uh, up to 50 mile per hour wind gusts, which could could not uh, saying it's going to be likely but could possibly bring down the uh, uh, power grid out here you know a couple power outages which could affect me and the stream ultimately so i'm going to go ahead and do an update video before that happens just in case a lot of uptick in the earthquake activity off the coast we're actually uh, on the west coast i should say and also in the intermountain west regions of uh Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming, and that also includes Yellowstone National Park. A little bit of uh, earthquake activity striking in that region as well. You can see a cluster of small quakes right around the uh, uh, right around the Yellowstone area. We'll check out the thumbnails here of the seismographs here in just a minute. There was a little bit stronger quake to the south around Kelly, Wyoming, 3.6 striking uh, oh, about 50 miles south of Yellowstone National Park, or at least 50 miles south of the uh, current earthquake activity there in the park. Idaho seen an increase in earthquake activity as well. Um, just kind of a given, I guess, when we see um, earthquake activity up there, we could uh, see swarms and whatnot in other regions uh, nearby. And that's kind of what's happening up here through Montana and whatnot. Uh, as far as the Washington region goes, couple small microquakes it looks like uh, northeast of Seattle and a little explosion that looks like down here near uh, West Longview I've seen quite a bit of those explosions recently throughout Washington and Oregon um, I'm gonna have to look into that and see what's going on there I'm sure it's some type of mining uh, query blast normally that's the case uh, let's see, some movement along the creeper section, creeping section of San Andreas Fault here near Soledad. And also the latest quake here, 2.6 near Huron. Uh, I believe I pronounced that right. Looks about the only pronunci pronunciation that I can uh, come up with for that town. <laughs> um, and that's kind of off of the, um, well away from the San Andreas Fault system, which is this red dark line here. <clears throat> I'm sure they're... Potentially could be some fault systems out here, but the USGS not showing it um, on this map. Also seeing a little increase in earthquake activity throughout Nevada and the Ridgecrest area. Just an increase in microquakes in the quantity of those that's going on there. Uh, no major swarms to report down in Southern California. A little uptick though on the Imperial Fault, which is kind of an extension of fault of the San Andreas Fault from the Brawley Seismic Zone, which is just south right here on this little red line. Um, but the Imperial Fault uh, runs through Southern Cal, part of Southern Cal, down into Baja, uh, uh, California region. But that red circle there indicating that most recent quake on that specific fault, the 2.5, some microquakes north of there. Not a major swarm, but a little increase there just off of the Imperial Fault system right there. So kind of keeping an eye on it, uh, just obvious sign of West Coast pressure out here from the Intermountain West all the way down to Southern California, just uh, it's pretty obvious right there. As always, right, you look over here to the West, Western part of this Pacific Ring of Fire and it's quiet, very quiet. So, uh, you know, it's that teeter-totter effect, that seesaw effect uh, in the plate tectonic department. Very quiet out here through the Indonesia area and into Samoa. A couple small quakes in this region, folks, but this is nothing compared to what average earthquake activity should look like on any given day. But uh, for now, West Coast on the uh, bullseye for potential further movement. So uh, be on guard out there. Some uh, quakes throughout Oklahoma and also around the uh, North Carolina region. Little one right there smack dab around the New Madrid fault system. This little 1.3 earthquake striking in that major hazard zone there. And uh, for the most part, like I said, worldwide it's pretty quiet over here. Uh, a little bit of movement throughout the Mediterranean region of the sea, Greece, 
And uh, looks like some uh, small earthquake activity in the Middle East there around the Iran region, 4.9. And of course, quite a bit of earthquake activity up around Iceland area. I'm sure you've heard about, uh, some, you know, it's made social media anyway, quite a bit of a earthquake movement up there. Right around, uh, do I even dare say that name? I am not going to. You guys can read it yourself. <laughs> I'm not gonna, not gonna even attempt that or this word. I man, whoo, that's a toughie. At least for me, anyway. 5.6 looks to be the largest in this cluster of quakes. There, uh, there was a 4.5. Looks like just a few seconds prior to that main shaker, and since then there's been a quite a few upper fours. Now, with always in this type of situation here, when we see. Um, this magnitude and multitude of quakes there's always potential for a larger movement out there it's something to keep an eye on 5.6 not a large earthquake but it's in the region of some pretty uh seismic seismically active areas and we could see you know larger movement here's the earthquakes of the last 19 or since 1900 to 2015 the magnitude over here on the on the left and of course the depth on the right you can see uh, that star indicating that most recent 5.6, but throughout this region here, there's definitely been a couple, couple looks like a little bit larger than 5.6 earthquakes there. So definitely be on, uh, be on guard. You know, like I say, we'd see a whole bunch of fours there, and and uh, it's just you know, and it's spread out. It's not you know one on top of each other. It's definitely a uh, looking like we could see a little bit potentially larger earthquake in this region we'll keep an eye on it a lot of folks did report filling it it is somewhat in a well i wouldn't say super populated area but uh, definitely seen quite a few reports on social media about this uh these earthquakes that it's been going on out there quite a few folks reported filling it uh looks like right around the epicenter pretty strong a little bit you know not super strong but the intensity level up there right around the orange indicating some uh some heavy shaking right around the epicenter area of that 5.6 and as far as the did you feel the responses out there well uh, let's see what we got here oh yeah quite a few reports in these weird i mean i just could not pronounce that how would one pronounce this? Look at that. Can you guys read that? That's a little on the uh, hard side for me. I, I, maybe Vogar. Is that right? Vogar. I think I can pronounce that. Pronounce that. <laughs> oh goodness. All right. But anyway, it's shaking uh, Iceland up there quite a bit. Be on guard out there for potential further movement with this type of uh, setup here being spread out and the multitude of quakes there other than that folks pretty quiet some movement down along the chile area north or uh, south america a couple fours and these are subduction quakes the reason why i say that is because of well you got the subduction peru Ch chile trench out there major subduction area where the world's largest earthquake took place back in the 60s the largest one at least recorded history the depth on these quakes here indicate the subduction quakes that I'm talking about, 169, 275, 187, and 111 kilometers downstream in this subducting area. So uh, that's that's that. Kind of something that we're, we should potentially be seeing up here in the Pacific Northwest soon. It happens periodically, but it just hasn't seemed to happen a lot in this subducting area. Uh, so it's kind of... Kind of a little, it's a little different, but in a way, the subduction dynamics is uh, somewhat similar. Looking at the trimmer map, this is probably from, uh, well, they don't have, what's the date today? 20, this is from yesterday. Just a little bit of movement along the Cascadia subduction zone there. Down dip, downstream in that uh, subduction area. These are not earthquakes, but trimmer. Uh, slow slip movement between the plates here. Uh, the slippage area with the locked section of the Cascadia sit, sitting off, uh, sitting just offshore there, waiting for, uh, waiting for her day. 
But uh, other than that, folks, uh, Yellowstone National Park, uh, let's check that out real quick. A couple earthquakes here that are mentioned. Um, you can see that 3. Point, I believe that's a 3.6 showing up rather nicely the further we go down south here, closer to the epicenter. Uh, on this station right here, you can see that uh, 3.6, making a well-defined signature on that seismograph. And uh, actually throughout the area, 3.6 will show up on many, many seismographs unless they're completely squashed like that. So right there, uh, that's at 3.6, I believe. I believe. Looks like about the same location, yes. But for the most part, uh, most of these stations are keyed up to how they should be. But like I said, some are squashed beyond belief. Uh, a couple of small microquakes in the northwest corner of the park that had been mentioned there on the USGS uh, earthquake page. That's going to be uh, these right here. These little spikes, a couple of small ones. So no major swarms going on yet at Yellowstone. It's been quite a while. Uh, you know, maybe we'll see that kick up here. Something keying up on... I'm not for sure what that is. That kind of looks odd. Could potentially be an earthquake. Uh, see which one that could have been. I'm not for sure, but it looked kind of odd. Not like an earthquake, but something else. Anyway, folks, um, have a good day out there. Let's see... Uh, it's windy. Like I said, it's really windy. Power could potentially go down. Um, not for sure if it will. Uh, PG&E has been pretty good with keeping the power on. I haven't had any flashes, any type of, uh, you know, blinkers. You know, like far as like the power going off for for five seconds and coming back on. So it's been pretty consistent. But if it does go down, um, I'll have to fire up the live stream when the wind dies down because it's it's scheduled to pick up for quite a while throughout the evening 50 mile per hour winds so uh, it could could knock it down this barrett station here down in southern cal picking up that earthquake activity um looks like right around the imperial fault system on that seismograph there it looks pretty active folks so you know unless we see some major release uh back over to the pacific uh western side of the pacific ring of fire I think we're on target for some further movement along the west coast so just be prepared and um you know we'll see what happens throughout the day today all right guys stay safe out there and we will chat at you guys a little bit later um and if the stream goes down i'll try and get it back up as quick as i can stay safe